Cancer is one of the most common and deadly diseases in the world. Doctors have been struggling for decades to find an effective treatment that doesn't have the side effects of chemotherapy or radiation. Enter the immune system. Hey there everyone, my name is Michael Mandanis, and I'm here to talk to you today about a unique way of treating cancer using the immune system called immune checkpoint inhibition. But first, what exactly is the immune system? Most people have a basic understanding of it, that it is the organ system in our body that protects us from infection. However, very few have an understanding of exactly how it works. Alright, so, the immune system functions mainly through specialized cells, including NK cells, T cells, B cells, and antigen-presenting cells, such as macrophages or dendritic cells. These are all classes of white blood cells produced in the bone marrow. In a normally functioning immune system, a macrophage will engulf a foreign invader, and it will process and break it down into smaller proteins, one of which can become an identifying marker for the invader called an antigen. This antigen is later brought to the surface of the macrophage in a process called antigen presentation so that it can present the antigen to T cells as the macrophage moves through the lymph nodes. This process allows the T cells to become educated and to remember the specific presented antigen so it can recognize which invaders to destroy by releasing cytokines, which are chemicals that have a wide variety of functions ranging from direct destruction of invaders to recruiting other cells to come and attack the same invaders. This works against foreign pathogens, but what about cancer cells? Cancer cells arise because of a large number of mutations that could occur in normal cells. So theoretically, the immune system should be able to detect and destroy cancer cells because they're different. However, many cancer cells have found ways of subverting T cell detection. T cells have a specific receptor on their surface called PD-1, or programmed cell death 1. Many cancer cells have an overexpression of surface proteins called PDL1 or PDL2. These are ligands that are able to bind to the PD1 receptor. These ligands are often covering the surface of the cancer cell in order to maximize the chance that they will bind to the PD1 receptor. This binding acts as a cloaking mechanism which down-regulates T-cells and prevents them from recognizing cancer cells. When T-cells have their PD-1 receptors bonded to the ligands on a cancer cell surface, it switches the T-cells from active mode to inactive mode. This is how certain cancer cells avoid the policing or surveillance action of the immune system by putting on the brakes or checkpoints that halt the immune attack. Traditional cancer therapies rely mostly on treatments like chemotherapy or radiation that work to kill malignant cells directly. However, new medicines in the form of antibodies have been introduced that work not directly on the cancer cells, but rather to reactivate parts of the immune system, such as T-cells. Blocking the interaction between the PD-1 receptor on the T-cell and the PD-L1 or PD-L2 ligands on the cancer cell in a so-called checkpoint inhibition, allows the T-cells to go into action and recognize the cancer cells in order to mount the expected destructive response. These new medicines are called immune checkpoint inhibitors, and a number of them are already available for use in the treatment of cancers of the skin, lungs, kidney, bladder, lymph nodes, and are showing promising results in other cancer types as well, as they rely almost entirely on the reactivation of part of the natural immune system. Blocking other immune checkpoints, such as CTLA-4, has also proven to be effective against cancer of the skin or the kidney. So, further studies are being pursued using other immune checkpoints, such as TIM-3, BTLA, or KIR. However, the PD-1 blockade has gained the most study, due in part to its high success rate in the setting of minimal side effects. Thank you for listening. My name is Michael Mandanis, and I hope that was informative.